US Array was founded in 1969 at NASA's request under the auspices of the National Academy of Sciences. Just prior to the Apollo 11 moon landing and the return of the lunar samples, NASA sought a new partner organization to engage and organize the research community. James Webb, NASA Administrator, wrote to President Frederick Seitz proposing a university association chartered to advance space science and technology. The result? The formation of USRA. Webb envisioned this new association as not only working with NASA in lunar science, but also in other scientific disciplines and technology areas. As the civilian space program grew to encompass missions in heliophysics, planetary science, astrophysics, earth science, microgravity science, and other disciplines, as well as technology development, US Array worked alongside NASA. It's instructive to look at a few examples of efforts undertaken by US Array, from its founding through to the present day, to fulfill its non-profit purpose and to also realize Webb's vision of close partnership with NASA and engagement of universities. US Array's first task, operation of the Lunar Science Institute and engaging the scientific community in the analysis of lunar samples that would be returned to Earth during the Apollo missions. Now called the Lunar and Planetary Institute, the LPI cultivated strong collaboration between NASA and the international research community to help organize a new research discipline, lunar and planetary science. The LPI helped lead research that resulted in a new understanding about the origin of the moon. Today, the LPI located in US Array's facility near NASA's Johnson Space Center continues the important job of organizing community activities to support NASA's exploration of our solar system with a specialized scientific and administrative staff. So I was part of the planetary radar group. We study uh, asteroids and planetary services using radar techniques. So the Alice Sewell Observatory studies over a hundred asteroids a year and there are thousands of potentially hazardous asteroids in our solar system so we are trying to catalog them and characterize all of them so with every new asteroid we study we're literally adding new information to our books nasa engaged us array to bring university expertise in computer science and applied mathematics to nasa centers in 1983 at the request of nasa ames research center U.S. Ray formed the Research Institute for Advanced Computer Science with a mission to engage academia and industry to support NASA's needs in three key areas. Artificial intelligence, high-performance computing, and human systems integration. So in the research projects that we have, there's a range of what we call technology readiness levels. Some things that are more fundamental research and some things that are very much more applied which will have near-term implications and impact on uh, societal needs. For those higher technology readiness level projects, we have companies like Google, Amazon, Uber, that are already starting to pick up the results of the research to apply them for commercial applications. Other pieces of our research are very fundamental where we're working with the university community on the next generation of breakthrough ideas that in 10 or 20 years will have impacts like the things that we've been working on for the last 10 or 20 years. AI, uh, the way it's done today and the way it's understood today, relies completely on data. So you have to have historical data or even data as you go. You have to collect data and learn from uh, the interactions that's, that is happening, whether it's some mechanical system or whether it's an ecosystem. So you get as much information as you can and then you basically train some model to learn those interactions. And that's what is going to help un uh, automate some future interactions that, that we might be going after. Flying up to 45,000 feet, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy SOFIA is an international collaboration between the United States and Germany and is used by researchers at universities and institutions around the world. USRA, in collaboration with NASA and the German SOFIA Institute, manages SOFIA's science mission. 
So one of the ways you have to think about fundamental research and how research like SOFIA can impact the future of humanity is actually to look back in time at how it has. SOFIA is very good at looking at the composition of gases in the regions where stars are forming and where stars are losing material. We have discovered a number of molecules with SOFIA. We've discovered OD, for example, deuterated oxygen, and that was never discovered in the interstellar medium before SOFIA. Can I predict what SOFIA is going to produce that's going to impact the world? It's very difficult to say. However, when you go out there and look at the universe, every single time you look, you could find something that can completely change our understanding. That's the thrill of observation. Even farther out into the thermosphere, you'll find your array enabling scientific research in the microgravity environment of space. Early in USRA's history, university researchers saw the benefits of using space as a laboratory. USRA helped enable experiments in fundamental science aboard Space Lab and later the Space Shuttle. USRA's work continues today aboard the International Space Station, where USRA is collaborating with universities and industry in combustion, fluid physics and complex fluids, areas of research integral to the future of exploration and commercialization of space. USRA is also collaborating with universities and NASA to understand the Earth's natural processes using data collected by NASA's remote sensing satellites. We are focusing on agriculture, so uh, trying to uh, uh, determine which regions around the world will have above normal crop production or the ones that are going to experience low production in crops. This information is especially important if you are looking at the prices of food in the marketplace. The other thing is we use the same information to determine what areas are at risk for disease outbreaks. For example, chikungunya, dengue, Rift Valley fever, cholera, and all others like that. I currently work on two projects. One of them is development of the new mission called PACE, uh, which is going to be a mission that is going to be seeing the ocean in an unprecedented way, helping us understand the diversity of the plant life in the ocean. And the other project that I'm involved in is called Exports, which is trying to understand the flux of this carbon, the pathways that the carbon take in the ocean as it's leaving the surface into the deep ocean, and then connecting everything back to those remote sensing satellites. The keys to USRA's success have remained unchanged throughout its 50-year history, close partnership with NASA and other agency it serves, remaining true to its non-profit charter and enabling Webb's vision of university engagement. The evolution, extent and depth of USRA's activities reveals the fulfillment of its charter. In 2069, USRA will be carrying out James Webb's vision in whole new ways we can hardly imagine. The next 50 years of space research and exploration will exceed the achievements of the past 50 years, and the next generation will set demanding goals, meet great challenges, and realize new visions.